Hey guys, Lee from Galaxy Reviews here with yet another video. Pretty obvious, right? This one is going to be a fun one. So today we're going to go ahead and review the MOGA mobile gaming clip for the Xbox One. Um, obviously with Game Pass actually being released, uh, this past week or so, I thought it would be a great investment to actually go ahead and test some of these attachments out. Um, I've actually gone ahead and tested Game Pass myself, and it's actually pretty badass if I do say so. So that's why I decided to get a little bit more serious and into it, especially since they do have a trip coming up over the next few weeks. I'm like, hey, why the heck not? Let's go ahead and test this out, see how it works. Um, I'm all, I may also do another future video because um, I am planning on also getting the Razer Kishi once that's back in stock. I'll go ahead and review that and then I'll provide a kind of a comparison to see which one I recommend the best um, out of the two. Alright, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so to start off, let's go ahead and move the Xbox controller off to the side. And let's go ahead and take a look at the box real quick. Uh, so for here, for this one, right, we see it's pretty straightforward, just kind of has a image of the attachment on a regular Xbox controller here on the front. Kind of gives you some specs on what can and can't fit um, on the accessory. It does say that you may need to remove your phone case, so keep that in mind. I went ahead and removed the phone case out of my phone, uh, from my phone, uh, just to make sure it fits so we don't have run into any issues. But I'm gonna go ahead and test that out with the um, cover as well, see how that goes. All right, so then next up we have the back. On the back, we also have a few more specs on the attachments, right? We have that the attachment has over 220 degrees of articulation, dual locking articulation points, adjustable cup holds, or sorry, clip holds, not cup holds, <laughs> adjustable clip holds for uh, to secure the phone in place, and then fits the Xbox wireless controller. Now, um, one thing I am going to test, and which is the reason I'm using this control, I've seen pretty much all the videos I've seen for the attachment um, use the regular Xbox control. Let's go ahead and test out the Elite, see how that goes. Um, so you know for, for a fact it will fit the Xbox control pretty well, so let's see how it fits this one. And then obviously in the last side here on the left we have the um, kind of the, and some more um, images of the dual locking articulation points as well as the expandable clip uh, to secure the phone in place. Alright, so let's get right into it. Oops, we do have a little bit of tape. Uh, give me one second. Alright guys, sorry about that. Had to go look for my trusty unboxing knife to cut the tape up because it was pretty stubborn. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that up. Alright, so first off we have kind of the user's manual. Should be pretty straightforward. Let's take a look here. Okay, yeah, so pretty much just kind of walks you in how to clip it onto the accessory, how to clip your phone onto the accessory, as well as clip it onto the Xbox, and how to make sure you don't damage or break the attachment, pretty much. All right, so let's go ahead and open this baby up. All right, so this is the attachment on its own. Pretty simple, actually, pretty lightweight. Um, the plastic does feel a little flimsy, I'm not gonna lie, so be careful. Definitely don't want to break it. Um, just so you guys are aware, this did cost around $15 through Amazon. It should be available at, at Best Buy as well from time to time. Unfortunately, it was out of stock. At the time I went ahead and ordered this, so I went ahead and just ordered it through Amazon. It did arrive pretty quick. So other than that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. This part is all plastic from what I can feel and it does have some rubber down here which should help prevent from scratching the controller up where most of the weight is which I assume that's pretty much the case and it also probably doesn't wiggle as much either um, all right so I mean that's pretty much it uh, let's see how easy is it to stretch this out okay pretty easy nothing too difficult like I said be careful the plastic isn't the strongest from what I can feel. So be careful with these two little prongs here that hold your phone. Definitely don't want to incorrectly use them and, and break it apart or something like that. All right, let's go ahead and attach this to the controller. All right, cool. That was pretty straightforward. Um, 
and it's a perfect fit. Well, I wasn't too super, I wasn't too worried about it. Oh, let me see something here actually. But yeah, I wasn't too worried about it. The Elite controller isn't too different from the regular Xbox control, so it should be pretty fine. Okay, so it is a little bit misaligned. Uh, so a little bit of user error there, but not a big deal. Shouldn't be a deal breaker. Everything else seems to fit perfectly fine. Buttons work perfectly. And just holding it feels natural. Nothing is obscured or blocked. Um, so let's go ahead, let me go ahead and pair this to my phone actually. And let's go ahead and put the phone up here as well and then we'll test it out. All right guys, so something I actually learned while connecting my phone or um, putting the phone into the attachment is that um, you will need to mess around with these little knobs here. I'm pretty sure that was mentioned in the user manual, just forgot to bring this up earlier, but these actually lock it into place. Right now, right, it's not moving, but if you did want to kind of move it around and adjust a little bit, you do need to um, loosen these up a little bit and it'll give you a lot more flexibility and then you just tighten it up. Pretty straightforward, but just be aware of that, that you don't go ahead and force it too much and break it. Just unscrew these a little bit. It, it'll actually become extremely loose and you should be able to modify it just fine. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into Game Pass. So I haven't linked to my controller yet or anything. I uh, just kind of walk you guys through that. Oh, I am getting a little bit of reflections. So let me go ahead and turn off the, the light real quick. All right, there we go. That should be a little bit better. Okay, so right now, let's go ahead and boot this up. And then you'll hit the sync button in the back of the controller. And once the little light is flashing, and go ahead and pair it up. Mine should already be linked. Let's see here. Yep, here it is. Xbox Elite controller. And I think we're good to go. Let's see, yep, perfect. Okay, so as you can probably see, it should be working fine. Yep, there we go. Let's go ahead and test this out. Let's see, which game should we try here? So far so good, it feels extremely smooth. Let's actually go ahead and go into Streets of Rage 4. Now keep in mind this is the beta phase, so uh, I imagine that as a lot more people start using the system and stuff like that, um, the xCloud, um, it will get improved over time. So I can't wait to see what other enhancements they come up with a little bit later on. You guys can actually see my reflection there. <laughs> All right, so, oh, also forgot to mention, for those wondering, I am using this on a Samsung Galaxy Note S10, oh, not Note, sorry, the X, the Galaxy S10 Plus. Um, and so far, sounds great, sound is amazing. The S10 Plus does have Dolby, so that probably should also help out quite a bit. I'm pretty sure it's not coming through the camera, but it's really, sounds really good. So far, super smooth, you guys can see it. <clears throat> uh, right now, there's pretty much no um, no freezing of the frames, no drop frames or anything like that from the internet connection. Um, so let's go ahead and skip the intro here. So far, so good. Let's go ahead into a quick stage here. Let's use Axel. Again, so far so good. Let's go ahead and skip that there. Now, I am also excited to try out the Kishi because it does pretty much make your phone a <laughs> Nintendo Switch, pretty much. So that should be pretty comfortable to use too. But so far, I have no complaints about this. Obviously, the Xbox controller is pretty um, smooth and comfortable on its own. Um, so you being able to use your control uh, on, and as part of the attachment really does go a long way. Now, hold up, let me actually look at my phone screen. I was looking through the camera, so it was a little bit tough. Um, so let's go ahead and... Okay, let's get a little bit more serious here. <laughs> I 
Again, it, there's no lag whatsoever. It feels like I'm actually playing the game uh, on the phone system, even though it's actually being streamed through the cloud. So for those who haven't heard of xCloud, this is pretty much like Xboxes or uh, the video games industry's version of um, Netflix, pretty much. So you get to play your games on the cloud, no need to actually download them onto the uh, phone system or anything like that. So it's actually pretty great. Can't wait to actually use this when traveling, visiting family, stuff like that. Um, this should be pretty good. Now, unfortunately, if you were planning to kind of use this while you may play your Xbox games like on a, on a plane or something like that, I don't think that'll work. Since you can't technically download it, you won't be able to play your games uh, offline while in airplane mode. And even if you were to use the airplane's Wi-Fi, it probably wouldn't be the best. I know it's pretty limited, so um, it might not be the best case scenario to test it out while uh, on a flight. So other than that, as long as you have a pretty good internet connection, it should play pretty smooth. Like right now, there's no lag, input lag whatsoever. I feel like I'm playing right on my TV or if the Xbox was somehow connected to my phone. But no, it's actually being streamed from the cloud. Like I said, kind of like Netflix, YouTube, stuff like that, where you don't actually download the, the video or video game in this case. And it's being streamed right through um, Microsoft servers. Now, there was a little bit of a delay there. Um, they didn't actually seem like there was a really big image layer or anything like that, but I did hear the audio kind of cut out. Um, just be expected, right? Like I said, since this is being streamed from the cloud, it does have to occasionally buffer depending on your internet connection, so keep that in mind. Um, other than that, um, it shouldn't be stuttering too much. Let's keep playing and see what, what ends up happening a little bit later once things get a little bit more hectic. Now keep in mind, I haven't played this game for a bit, little bit, so I'm a little bit rusty. <laughs> Don't judge my uh, my gameplay here. But like I said, so far so good. I have no complaints uh, whatsoever. Now of course with more intensive games, uh, which we actually could go ahead and try in a little bit. Uh, maybe like Forza or um, maybe like a shooter or something. Um, we might actually go ahead and try Forza, right? That one's really fast paced, pretty intense graphics. And... Um, it does have to do quite a bit of loading since right you're on a car, game has to load quite a bit. I wonder if I'm wondering if that actually will have any impact whatsoever on the on the system. Alright, let's go ahead and go into another game. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit game. And then like I said, let's go ahead and try out. Forza. Let's see how long that takes to load. So as you can see, it does take quite a bit of time to load. I'm hoping my camera doesn't shut off here. It did give me a message that it is overheating a little bit. <laughs> so far so good, intro looks fine. Again, kind of as, as if I was just running it through the Xbox. Intro looks fine too. Now, obviously, it, there's, it's not like in 4K or anything like that. You could possibly get that if you had like a really, really, really good connection. Uh, just for reference, I have a 300 megabit per second um, internet connection, um, which is pretty good. Obviously, not gonna uh, complain about that. Um, when playing online games and stuff, streaming, it's more than enough. Uh, but if you do have a more intense internet connection, much faster uh, than that, then uh, the game could look much, much better. Um, other than that, one other thing um, I will bring up is if you do notice, at least for fours, I didn't really see if it, that was the case during Streets of Rage, I kind of missed it. Uh, but as you can see, it does have a little bit of a frame around it. Obviously, it's much uh, more widescreen than what you would see on your actual television screen. And there's like big chunks um, on the sides that aren't filling up um, as well. Welcome back. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. So 
So I'm noticing a little bit more stutter in uh, Forza, obviously kind of like I expected. Um, this game is a lot more fast paced, a lot more intense. So um, it does have to do a, a, a lot more loading than what Streets of Rage um, did. So even though the image still looks pretty good, um, there isn't any lag or anything like that. Um, but I am noticing that the frame is freezing up a little bit. There are some drop frames and um, the sound is cutting out a little bit. Nothing crazy or anything like that. Plus also, um, here's the thing, like Forza is all also an always online game unless you select not to. So that could also have something to do with it. It could also be uh, focusing on streaming the uh, connection for all the different players in the world. Um, as you can see, there's one off in the distance. Not sure you guys can see that. It's pretty small on the phone screen. But yeah, um, right now I'm actually seeing a few players online. Uh, so that could have something to do with it as well since um, it's a lot more um, internet connection intensive than a game like Streets of Rage is. So keep that in mind as well, if you are planning to use this to play online games or anything like that, um, it is something that you would need to keep in mind. It may not give you the best connection, but if you did want to use it to play like some online game, uh, sorry, some single player games, just for fun, just kind of um, spend some time, stuff like that, this should be more than good enough. Um, obviously, PlayStation and Xbox do have something similar where you stream right from the console. So that could also um, be an alternative. Not sure how good that would be compared to this. I haven't actually given it a shot myself. I did. Ha I have tried the uh, PlayStation version and actually does also um, drop some frames from time to time. Uh, but when playing games like RPGs or stuff like that, it should be more than enough. You should be fine. But be careful if you are playing any games that require uh, pretty intensive, perfect timing or stuff like that. Um, if there is a chance it might throw you off. Like I said, as long as you don't take it too seriously, just use it for fun from time to time. Um, it should be should be perfect. Because uh, kind of like right now, right? I'm just kind of cruising around. I'm just trying to have some fun here while recording the video. Whoops! Um, and it's actually perfect. Uh, besides like some drop frames here, there it's still more than enough. If I just wanted to have some fun, maybe play pours a little bit before I go into bed or if the TV is taken up or something like that. Uh, this should be fine actually. I actually, I actually uh, visualize myself using this pretty often. Sometimes I don't want to sit at, in front of the TV, right? You just want to lay in bed, have some fun, uh, kind of relax a little bit. Uh, so this should work. Whoops. Again, there you saw some kind of drop frame. So like I said, this should give you a pretty good idea of what it looks like and how it runs. Um, in case you did want to give this a shot, um, it is part of the um, Xbox Game Pass membership. So if you do have that, you could always give this a, a try, download it for free, give it a shot, see how it runs for you. And if you are planning on taking it pretty seriously, um, then definitely look at investing uh, on something like this. It's actually great. Like right now, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at it through the uh, camera, so it's a little bit harder. Uh, but still, like if you were just playing this normally, um, right now it's pretty, super comfortable. Kind of feel like, like I said, kind of if I was playing right on my TV, obviously it's a little bit smaller, but other than that, it r runs pretty good. Feels super comfortable in the hands. Uh, now you just gotta compare this to something like the Razer Kishi, which is more specifically designed for something like this. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is right now I am laying my hands on my desk here, uh, but I am noticing that if you do hold it, especially with the phone, it is a little bit heavy. So um, there's a chance that if you're just kind of holding this up in the air, your hands may get a little bit tired depending on how strong you are, so keep that in mind. Because uh, yeah, you can definitely feel like right now if I kind of move it to the side or something like that, obviously you won't be gaming like that, but in any, in any uh, case, um, like I said, you do definitely feel the heft of the phone up top, so it definitely makes it a little bit top heavy. But other than that, it's a great system. I'm sorry, it's a great accessory. <laughs> Um, plus, yeah, I mean, the xCloud is also a great service, a great system to implement. Um, we could possibly see other games uh, implement this in the future. Obviously, uh, Sony isn't planning on doing this anytime soon. Uh, but I'm pretty sure eventually they will cave and uh, possibly even Nintendo as well. So this is actually going to be pretty exciting to see how this evolves in the future. Definitely cuts down on load times, updates. Um, you can pretty much just jump right into the game if you wanted to. Um, like I said, it does have some imperfections. This is still the beta phase, um, so keep that in mind. Like I said, some frames do drop here or there, but other than that, it runs great. 
Like right now, if I'm not really moving too much, game seems to be running perfectly fine. I don't see any drop frames. Music and sounds sound great. Uh, but again, once you kind of start going into... See, there we go. As soon as I start driving around, the game has to buffer, has to load up some of the uh, images and graphics and stuff, right? Um, it does take a, take a hit a little bit. All right, sorry about that, guys. The uh, camera actually shut off on me, kind of what I was afraid of. Kind of the uh, downside of uh, recording on HD and this Sony cam, like, yeah, be careful with these Sony cams. Sometimes they turn overheat. But anyway, back to the topic at, uh, on hand. Um, yes, I definitely do recommend it. Um, if you do want a cheap accessory, <clears throat> uh, this is definitely the way to go. Razer Kishi is um, at a, uh, pretty much like $100. Um, so it is a lot more expensive. That would be an option if you're looking to go a lot more hardcore. Um, and the quality compared to, let's say for example, if you have an Xbox Elite controller, I'm pretty sure the quality will not compare to this. This is super comfortable, really great, especially if you have this type of controller. It is something you might want to just keep using for uh, xCloud. Uh, but like I said, if you are looking to actually take this portable to like a family member's house, friend's house, whatever the case may be, uh, then Razer Kishi may be the way to go. But we'll see. Um, once I'm able to get my hands on that and review it, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Other than that, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you guys have about this accessory. Like I said, it's only $15, available pretty much anywhere, as long as they're in stock. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Are you planning on getting this? Have you tried xCloud, and do you like it? Until next time, guys, see you later.